I could be in front of my pretty face and I have to be careful with it because my face is really pretty and I mean people want to hear what I got to say but not more than they want to see my face. <laughs> I just can't believe that. <laughs> original wireless woman welcoming you back to our spot room 303 if you are new welcome to our crew but my returnees you know what we do if you like this video well then like this video let the comments reveal how you really feel and if you're feeling a vibe well go ahead on and subscribe but before you blink share this link welcome back wi-fi to another episode of the wireless woman and when i do my intro i always say the original wireless woman because it is my hope to get more and more women unplugged from the machine so that we can live unbothered and unleashed section leaders what is our concept one band one sound one band one sound. So today I am going to be talking about queen or a pawn. Ladies, we are playing chess, not checkers. And it's time for us to start thinking very strategically about what these next years are going to mean in terms of the moves that we should be making to preemptively protect our empires. But before we get into today's content, you already know what time it is. What are we going to do tomorrow night? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. It is time to call the roll. So I need all of my black queens to the front of the class. It is time to read aloud. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right, Wi-Fi's. Welcome to my queen or pawn episode of The Wireless Woman. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like the video, my dear, well, I love it and also make sure you take time to subscribe to this channel and click the bell for notification of uploads and when i go live also make sure you leave me some comments let me know uh, how you're feeling about the content and what type of content you would like to see if you are not seeing it at this present time Queen or pawn, ladies, it is a very inundating time for black women. You know, we have always been the trendsetters. We are called upon more than ever to be the ones that give value and definition to what is trending these days. Black women are currently wielding an immense amount of economic, political, social power and influence. Pretty much anything that black women are subscribing to, promoting, it, you know, it's moving communities of people from one priority to the next. You know, whatever we're valuing at any given time. I'm seeing a lot of emphasis now being placed on swirling and white men and you see all of these white men that are coming into these black female spaces and now all of a sudden it's creating large platforms for them to be successful and to be supported you do everything they said you could do black women it's time for us to stop blowing wherever the wind goes and start to realize how powerful influential important you is smart, you is special, and you is important. It's time for us to start realizing that. It's time for you to get up in the morning, have a mantra, affirmations, mottos, meditations, 
whatever it is that you need to begin to embrace your seat, your throne, your position of power and to stop allowing that to be siphoned and given away to anyone who's willing to pander to whatever we have set as the agenda on any given day. I'm seeing large groups of women who are pulling out these large absorbent capes in order to cape for communities of men. And I get it. If we're playing checkers and not chess, the queen is the most powerful player on the board, but it's because she's protecting the king. Now, here's the thing. What is the purpose to which we are being called upon to protect these kings? What are we protecting them from? And what are we protecting them for? The truth of the matter is we are the ones that are suffering the most perpetuated violence the most uh, degradation coming from these kings. So we're protecting them to the detriment of ourselves. We're protecting their image, even though it is uplifting really the most debasing element of our community. So we really have to begin to look at whether or not we're going to cover these men economically, cover these men financially because economics and finances are two totally different things. If we're going to politically cover these men and cape for them when it comes to setting their agendas, you know, mass incarceration, police violence in front of ours, abortion rights, and making sure that we have equal pay. Like we never work our way back around to black female agendas being placed at the forefront of black power initiatives. And that's really sad when we're a group of women who campaign so hard for our men, when we're a group of women who are willing to accept pretty much any behavior of men in our community just so long as they are in our community. and. It's, it's really starting to take a toll and be a drag on the black community. The fact that black women have caped for men for so long, you're now being labeled masculine because anyone who makes that deep of an investment, of course, is going to expect there to be a rate of return on that same investment. So we have become embittered by the fact that we have protected, caped, pacified, and pandered to men all to the detriment of ourselves. And now it's time for us to play a whole new game. It's time for us to recognize our power as queens to be able to shape, call, mold the kingdom, the queendom that we want to reign over, that we want to live in. You know, I had a conversation with one of my friends where we talked about being separate. Here's what you have to understand about misogyny. It is racism's sexy cousin. So the same conversations that black people have about wanting to be separate from white people so that we can assert our economic, political, and social independence from them. It's not that we want to live in a system that they can't participate in. It's that we want to be equal participants in the system. We want to come with our own land, our own industries, our own institutions. And then from that place of equality with whites, negotiate what is going to be your part, what's going to be my part, and how we can fair and equitably distribute and share resources. When colonizers <laughs> came from European countries to seek out these new lands, they found people that were already living on those lands cooperatively with each other. Even if they were competing for scarce resources, it was for, it was for them to have the ability to gain those resources and then share it with the community at large. That's never been the mindset or the agenda of European people from the inset of our encounter with them and women unfortunately our men have moved into what i call black-faced white supremacy 
in in large part and I'm not saying all of them and I'm not even gonna pander to having to qualify what I'm saying because if it hurts your feelings maybe it's some soul searching you need to do on your own but it's not necessarily my personal prerogative to cater to every individual black man that's doing what he's supposed to do when our community is burning to the ground I'm just gonna get some water and I'm just gonna throw it on there whoever gets hit you know that's unfortunate but this is the work of <laughs> This is the work that we need to be about right now, women, in order to actually impact and make a difference and make changes in our community to do the thing that our men haven't been willing to do, that we have been covering and caping for them while they have continued to not do. So I'm not even feeling like I need to qualify these statements. That would be more than what I'm willing to do because ultimately, and, and as I always say, I have one, you know, I have black sons. I have a black man in my life whom I simply adore and still doesn't negate the fact that the community is on fire. Still doesn't negate the fact that there's lots of growing he can do and lots of growing that we as a community have to begin to be accountable for. We as women now have to begin to go that separate way. And it's like I said, everybody that's going with us, everyone that's looking for the generational wealth gap to close everyone who's looking to be able to make uh, social and political platforms that will address the black agendas and the black issues in the black community just like every other community has just like the lgbtqia community is able to address their agendas and move those uh, legislations forward we as black people been in this country for hundreds of years still complaining about the effects of slavery and even other cultures of people who have been slaves like us holocaust survivors like the jewish people are not still complaining about their plight because they have moved into those areas of thriving and are no longer on a survival mode so black women if we don't have black kings in our lives i'm not saying they're not out there there's still a queendom there's still an empire to build. We are going to have to become such better stewards of where we're putting our energy. We cannot fight this defensive war to cover our men from all of the atrocities of they are supposed to be out in front protecting us, building a community for us to live and dwell safely in. But if that ain't the case, and if it ain't going to be the case, then we're going to have to get out here and build it for ourselves. We're going to have to put a whole lot less energy into how we can be concerned for the feelings of people that have not even brought the black female agenda to any type of national platform. When you were getting sprayed with water hoses and attacked by dogs, when you were going into schools with National Guard protecting you, you're now being called dogs by your own men. And it's time for us to move in a new direction, move towards a new way. The beautiful thing about the queen piece on the chessboard is their ability to move all over the board in ways that other people can't. We can do what our men can't do. And we need to begin to be focused on that instead of focused on how we can use every single angle and manipulation and energy and skill and seduction that we have to secure one of them. We're acting more like pawns, like dispensable pawns than queens. And it's just as simple as a decision to get up in the morning, to be about your business, to better yourself, to create groups to mentor you, to have business enterprise about yourself. And I promise when you're enjoying your life, when you are powerful, when you're wielding the energy that you have to do good for yourself, you're gonna attract people that wanna be in the vein of that same energy, people that want to treat you well. Admissive woman, first be powerful. That is what a lot of people are missing. A lot of people are not submissive. They just don't have what it takes, so they're just obeying. And they're passing it on to women who have achieved 10 times what they have and saying they are not 
submissive. No, you are not submissive to you just don't have enough power to be dangerous, to you don't have enough resources to display your unsubmissive nature nature. So if you are ready to make that shift, if you are ready to un plug from a system that says because you are the woman you have less value than everyone else it's the same system that says because you're black you have less value than everyone else and i'm trying to continuously draw the correlation between white supremacy and misogyny between white oppression and black oppression so that you can begin to understand you're dealing with the same narcissistic monster on both sides of that coin so that we as black women can move into that same 1950s, 60s, 70s energy of let my people go. It's our time. And we are uniquely positioned to make these moves all around the board where no one else can go. And I hope you'll go there with me. I hope that you'll unplug, be unbothered, and unleashed. Because as always, I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, your neighborhood wireless woman, urging you to come out of the matrix, to live free. You know, and if you with the shit, go ahead and drop me that fire headphones emoji in the comments. Until the next time, class is now dismissed. Thank you for sticking around until the very end of the episode. If you like this content, be sure to check out this content right here. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel with this link here. Until the next time, be unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed. We don't negotiate with terrorists.